Whenever we're thinking about planting our gardens, we should always be thinking about options for rotating our crops to different parts of the garden. This is typically a practice that is done to avoid soil-borne pathogens such as fungal issues and other diseases that can overwinter in the soil. The other important consideration to remember is we're not only thinking about rotating that particular crop such as the tomatoes for example, but we're also thinking about rotating everything within that family. So for example, the Solanaceae family includes tomatoes, but also includes potatoes, eggplant, and bell peppers. The cucurbits is going to include your squash and your cucumbers. Um, your brassicas are going to include your cabbage and your kales, your mustards. The last one will be your legumes, which is going to include your peas and your beans. At most, we want to grow the same crop or the same family in the same part of the garden for three years, and then we should have a plan to rotate that whole entire family out of that part of the garden to a new location. Now, the size of your garden is going to dictate how far away you can rotate those crops. The further you can rotate out, the better. Crop rotation is an effective tool in combating soil soil-borne diseases and fungal pathogens that you might be dealing with in your garden, but it's not going to be as effective against insect pests and other pest issues that you might have. This has been Caleb Carter with the University of Wyoming Extension, and you're watching From the Ground Up.